Hello, my name is Will Dean, I'm the Forest Author. Today I'm going to talk about proofs. How are you? It's good to see you. Um, I'm here in my cabin, it's getting very cold this time of year, but I have a good well-stocked bar over there, so I'll be fine. Um, I want to talk about proof copies, or advanced reader copies, otherwise known as ARCs, or galleys. Um, basically, books uh, that are sent out to authors and bloggers and journalists well before the publication date. So what is a proof? So this is something, this is a world that I was not aware of 10 years ago. And when I started to write my books and I started to uh, investigate into publishing, how publishing worked and follow editors and agents on social media, then I started to realize, hmm, proofs. So these are books, these are versions, early versions, uncorrected versions of novels that will come out in three months, six months, 12 months time that are sent out to bloggers, authors, public other publicists, uh, journalists, so that they can read them in advance, maybe provide quotes or maybe review them or just kind of shout about them, build buzz. <laughs> And I was, yeah, this was a whole new world to me. I wasn't familiar with this world of proofs or galleys or arcs. Um, but it's kind of interesting. So let me start off by saying that this is really only, I think, relevant to traditionally published authors. And not all traditionally published authors get proofs. Um, some publishers don't do it so much. Some authors don't get them. It's like a very, it varies a lot, but... Let me give, I can use my books as an example. So when Dark Pines came out, which was in January 2018, January last year, that was my debut. About seven months before the proofs, the first proofs were printed. So these were versions, kind of simple versions with cheaper paper of the book um, that were kind of ready, but they weren't quite finished. The proofreading wasn't quite done, but it was kind of done. And those early copies, they print the first batch and then they get sent out to authors and journalists. They're kind of paperback. Even if your books are hardback, the proofs will tend to be paperback. Sometimes they're uh, kind of in an ebook format. Sometimes they're kind of bound with, with, with wires. If you're Margaret Atwood or Cormac McCarthy or someone, maybe they're beautiful hardback covers with sprayed edges and stuff. But the, the quality of the proofs varies a lot and it's not that important to be honest. But the main thing is that those proofs get to the right people. So the proofs go out and if people like the book, if the authors who receive the book like it and they talk about it, that can create a sense of anticipation, you know, and readers can get excited about it before it happens and that can drive pre-orders in bookshops. With which is really a very important uh, factor in the success of any book these days. So proofs are this little secret world that most readers don't know about and don't really care about. But for us authors, they're kind of important. And who gets your proofs is important. Uh, authors and journalists receiving your proofs in a timely manner is important. I get sent um, between five and 10 proofs a week here in the forest. So I have to trek uh, that way about, it's about two kilometers, between two kilometers and two miles in all weathers. And I have a post box, a green plastic post box on a stick. And it's, it fits about five proofs in, so it's normally fine. And I go and pick them up and then I trek home again. Can jump over the back fence. You okay? Never better! So let's say I get an average seven a week. So seven a week is like 350 proofs a year. I read about 100 books a year, I would say. 
and I would say about 30 to 50% of those are proofs and the rest are books that I want to read um, for pleasure and so that I can improve as a writer. I tend to read a proof and then a non-proof and then a proof and then a non-proof roughly. That for me keeps me uh, content, keeps me sane. It allows me to read proofs, especially proofs by debut authors, which I really want to do because plenty of established authors uh, read my proof and I'm forever grateful to them for that because they didn't know who I was. They didn't know if the book was going to be any good. So I want to kind of pay that forward and I try and read as many uh, debut proofs as I can. But ultimately, I can't read 350 proofs a year. I tend to read maybe between 30 and 40, something like that. So that's tough. That's tough because I don't get to read all those proofs. And that's just the way it is. At the beginning, I felt extraordinarily guilty that people were sending me these beautiful proofs of really interesting books. And I just didn't have the time to get to them. And I felt bad. But now I don't feel so bad because it's just the way it is. It's just the reality. And some people get sent many more proofs than I do. Uh, Marianne Keyes was talking on Twitter the other day about how many books she gets sent and it's extraordinary and we can't read them all so we do our best so I tend to pick them up uh, read the first page read the back of the book and then decide if I'm going to continue reading it but proofs are really really important they build that anticipation they get the book cover in front of people's eyes wow an eagle just flew past Hopefully it didn't carry my cat away. My cat's pretty heavy. It should be fine. But proofs are important. Um, as an author now, I try and read as many as I can, but I will never be able to read them all. Um, what do I do when I read a proof? If I do not like the book, for whatever reason, I will never mention that. I won't go on Twitter and say, I read this proof and it was garbage. I would never do that. Uh, I don't believe in that at all. I will just abandon that proof. Or if I read it all the way through, I will just leave it there. Um, but if I like a proof, if I love a story, if I think, wow, this is there's a lot of talent here, then I will likely offer a quote and I will send that quote. I'll either tweet the quote or I'll send it to their publicist or their editor. Uh, that is how the proof thing works, basically. Um, but my house, my wooden house over there is getting full up. Of proofs. You can't sell proofs, you can't really give them away because they have errors in there, they're not the finished product. So I don't know what to do with them. Right now i am just kind of stack them all up, uh, but they are going to take over my forest soon. So I need to think of something. I can't burn them. It just feels, uh, I, can't, I just can't do that. I can't have a bonfire and burn proofs. It feels wrong. It feels very wrong. So I have to figure out how to donate them or how to do something with them that feels okay. But that's that's an explanation of proofs. Let me show you a few proofs. Okay, just so you know what they look like. Here's a few proofs. This is the proof of the chalk man. Which is a... Uh, came out... January 2018, uh, fantastic book written by C.J. Tudor. And this is the proof, very cool looking proof. This is the proof of Twisted, the new book by Steve Kavanagh. Really good proof. You'll see there, for example, I don't know if you can see it, but it says uncorrected proof, not for sale or quotation. That's what they all tend to say. This is the proof of She Lies in Wait by Githa Lodge. Really nice proof. And this is the proof, which is very cool. It has this very cool lettering of The Furies by KT Lowe. They vary a lot um, in terms of their appearance, the quality of the paper, the quality of the cover, whether the cover image is the final cover image that will appear on the hardback or on the paperback when it comes out. But that's proofs. If you have any questions about proofs, about arcs, about um, the way I deal with proofs, please do drop a comment and I will reply. Share this video if you can on social media with your writing group, with your friends, and I'll be back very soon with a new video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.